Welcome to Channel It Resolves, where we play a new deck list every video. I'm Country Fried and Spell Slingers Dominaria United's here. Thank God, man. That summer drought was the most painful crap I've ever felt in my life. It really felt like a long stretch this time. So to those of you that submitted decks for the one shot of country, thank you guys very much. But guys, stick around. We got Rakdos Midrange. It's a lot of fun. Liliana the Bell's in there. We got some tenacious underdog interaction with the Meat Hook Massacre. The deck list intro, the deck list outro. You get a couple games. We're putting these things out fast just to give you guys some type of idea or a little bit of inspiration or some fun of some stuff to watch but here it is Rakdos Midrange stay safe we'll see you in a second peace all right guys so hopping into this deck list we got a removal package here with uh two cut downs three voltage surge two infernal grasp and then three meat hook massacres look meat hook massacre doesn't fuel up as quick without the shambling gas and the deadly dispute gone but it's still really good and uh i'm still running a three of it just as a possible board sweeper if we actually have to because there's a three card interaction going on within this deck list it's just super powerful um but we'll get more to that here at the end uh, we got some card draw, and of course, we get to drop a 2 2 Goblin Shaman that's going to make us our treasure tokens to help us ramp a little bit if it lives long enough. Uh, we can discard two cards, draw two cards, and then, of course, exile the Saga, and then it comes back as a uh, reflection of Kiki Jiki where you can copy your creatures. Our creature package are Tenacious Underdog, two of the Raven Man, um, four Blood Tithe Harvesters, three Graveyard Trespassers, three Shieldred, uh, the Apocalypse. So the interactions with the, the creatures, I mean, you've got Tenacious Underdog it come in as a 3-2. However, you're also going to be utilizing it. That is the preferred card you're discarding on the plus one with Liliana the Bell, just because of its Blitz ability. So this with this, beautiful. And then, of course, if you've got a Meat Hook in play and you're Blitzing it in, then you're also pinging your opponent off that as well. Um, with the uh, Raven Man... At the beginning of each end step, if a player discards a card this turn, create a 1-1 Blackbird creature token with flying, and this creature can't block. So it can't block, but it can be blocked. But it's in the air, and it's a 1-1. And you activate that um, for three colorless and one black at sorcery speed. And Raven Man's a 2-1. So basically, you're just trying to get your uh, opponent to discard a lot of cards. Um, the Blood Tithe Harvester comes in just because it's a great two drop. It's a three two. And then, of course, when it comes into play, you could create a blood token. And then, if you tap and sacrifice Blood Tithe Har Harvester, then target creature gets negative X, negative X until the end of turn, where X is twice the number of blood tokens that you control. And you activate that as a sorcery as well. Uh, graveyard Trespassers just to kind of help us clean up their graveyard a little bit in case if they're running Reanimator, but it also helps us with the uh, life gain and stuff like that. So Graveyard Trespassers still, I would say, arguably the best three drop in the game. It comes in as a 3-3. It's got a ward cost of your opponent has to discard a card just to target it. And then, of course, if you uh, exile a creature card, you can gain life that way. Or you can just start exiled everything out of their graveyard. Um, just watch your life totals because, I mean, that's kind of what Graveyard Trespassers is there for. Even if you've got to exile your own creatures out of your graveyard, other than Tenacious Underdog, we're not bringing them back. And then, of course, if it goes Nightbound, then it becomes a 4-4 four -four and you can do that twice to the graveyards instead of once when you attack. So yeah, Graveyard Trespass is definitely the three drop for this deck list. Shieldred the Apocalypse, we didn't get it on the board, which I'm kind of sad, but we'll keep playing it, but I want to get this video out. Um, it's two colorless, two black, it's four five, it's got death touch. Whenever you draw a card, you gain two life, and whenever your opponent draws a card, they lose two life. So the whole deck's kind of gain and drain like. And then of course, invoke despairs, target opponent sacrifices a creature. If they can't, they lose two life, and you draw a card, and then you repeat the process for an enchantment of Planeswalker as well. And then of course, Liliana the Vel. Uh, I forewarned the stream if you have not played against this in standard, be ready for it. She's here, and she's here to stay. She's good. She's really, really, really good. Way, way better than what she looked like on the surface when she came back way back in the day. Um, for her plus one, each player discards a card. Again, we're going to use the interaction with Tenacious Underdog. And then 
we're preferring to discard Tenacious Underdog. However, if you're not playing up against a creature deck where you need this type of stuff, then you can utilize those as well. You just got to pick and choose. Um, negative two is target player sacrifices a creature. just helps us clean up the board state a little bit. And then, of course, your negative six is separate all permanents target player controls into two piles. That player sacrifices all permanents in the pile of their choice. So we're really using the plus one and the negative two a lot just to control the board state and the hand size of your opponent. So with that interaction, though, the plus one, each player discards a card. We're looking for Tenacious Underdog as our target, and that dwindles our opponent's hand, but at the same time, it just puts uh, Tenacious Underdog in the bin for us so we can bring it in on its blitz, blitz cost where it's two colorless, two black, you pay two life, and then, of course, it attacks in, and then when it leaves, um, as long as it wasn't exiled, then you get to draw a card as well. And then when it does leave the field, if we've got Meat Hook on the board, then uh, your opponent's going to lose a life off of that. So, yeah, the whole, deck, the whole deck list has got interactions going on like crazy. Um, the Pain Lands are not that hard in this deck list. Uh, you only got the four with the Sulphur Springs. Um, and there's a lot of ways to get around utilizing Sulphur Springs for the black and the white. Um, the only time we really get hit with it a lot is when the Invoke Despairs come up because you're trying to get to that four black as quickly as possible. But however, by then, you're usually taking their life total down a lot quicker than they're taking yours down. And then, of course, we've got Takanuma to bring back Liliana or a creature if we had to. And then we got Crucible of Defiance so we can drop some uh, 2 one, one uh, colorless spirit creature tokens with haste. So, yeah, guys. And then, of course, Xander's Lounge, which we can cycle to draw cards. So I know it's a, I know it's a three color land and a two color deck, but that's just to utilize it to uh, stabilize your mana, um, your color spread. And then, of course, if you're already stabilized and you pull Xander's Lounge and you can utilize it on a cycle ability to draw a card. And there you go, guys. That's it. It's Rakdos Midrange. It was a lot of fun. I think this deck's pretty good um i've changed up a couple things i believe the original list was on tcg player or mtg arena zone uh dog dogger t bones list that he tagged or something and uh, i'll definitely link the deck list to that below as well but i just changed it up because i wanted more meat hook one less invoke despair i wanted another cut down and i wanted another infernal grass because it looks like people are playing a lot more creatures right now at the beginning of this i don't know how the meta is going to level out but right now having that creature removed Removal is more important to me uh, in the early game. So with that, guys, I'm going to let you get to the gameplay. I'll see you guys at the end of the video. Stay safe. Be happy and healthy. Peace. I almost blew it. We'll see you guys later. All right. Opponent goes first. Uh, yeah, we'll give it a shot. Hopefully we draw into that land. Our opponents go. We're waiting for them. There's a land. Sure. So they're gonna play Rakdos Amble. Right on, right on. Okay, um, put this one down. We're gonna go here. Gain a little bit back. Have this ready. 
That'll take care of Liliana. <laughs> Haven't you ever heard of personal space? We got a talker. Okay, so with that, yeah, let's go ahead and crack, let's do this, we'll keep this one just in case, probably should have kept the uh, artifact too. I like the position we're in. Definitely like the position we're in. We'll see where they go with this. Uh, I don't know what they got in their hand. So apparently some type of removal spell. But they can't discard a card. So maybe Infernal Grasp. They can hit something with it. Alright. GG's. Not horrible. Not horrible. Uh, yeah, we'll definitely keep this. Try and take as, not take as much life off with that pain land. We've got to get used to those. Um, however, underdog's also the card that we want to discard if we got Lily. So that kind of sucks. So they're a reanimator style, maybe? Okay. Hmm. 
Definitely should have cut the cut down. <laughs> Def definitely should have. <laughs> Off you go. There we go. Now we should be able to start working this the way we need to. Okay. You won't be outsmarting me. Alright, GG's. Man, if we could get that meat hook massacre in with that tenacious underdog and the tenacious underdog Lily. Man, the interactions of that, those three cards together, just, I mean, chef's kiss. All right, guys, so there was gameplay. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed it. Yeah, here's the deck list. I'll leave a link to it below. Like I said, I believe it started as a dog or T-bones list or somebody. Somebody, look, good cards are good cards. If you made a Rakdos mid-range deck, this is probably going to be something similar you're going to come up with, regardless of who made it first. But I'll definitely uh, link the Dogger T Bones article below. So if somebody else made it, don't come at me. It just is what it is. I'm trying to give credit where credit's due, but we did tweak it ourselves too, so we could call it our own. And it could just be that. Change out one card and call it your own. Uh, look, it's really good. It's stable. It's a lot of fun. There's a lot of interactions going on in it. And if you like Rakdos other than the Anvil side of it, um, then this is definitely a solid list to start up with. Uh, I don't know if it's going to be the list that I end with eventually. Uh, Raven Man's fun, but it's been a little um, underwhelming. So... I don't know if I was to change two cards out or to open two card slots so you could change in or plug in two cards of your choice. I would say start with Raven Man. The rest of this interacts really well. These I wouldn't touch. Actually, if anything, I would plus them all up to fours. But that's my advice. Take it for what it is. Take the list. It's now yours. Take it out. Change one card. Make it all yours. All right, guys, with that, stay safe, be happy and healthy. Have a great one. Welcome to Dominary United. The summer droughts over, people. Thank God. With that, peace. Love you guys. Have a great one.